had to put my hand behind the back of the seat and I just felt this kind of round metal object <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. um, and so I waited until we stopped and I stood up and um, to, to Ian's great delight he kind of stood up and said oh yes I know exactly what this is and got this hand grenade and um, passed it to the soldiers. Uh, Judith uh, a lot of the times in political frenemies as Ian illustrated there you know, the friendship starts because of a common interest, being part of an all-party parliamentary group, but also trips uh, play a very big part. Uh, tri trips abroad, where MPs from those groups go off together somewhere in the world. Now, you both visited Ukraine uh, in December. Tell us a little bit about your trip. Uh, we, we visited, um, myself and Ian visited Ukraine in December, um, along with a, a charity called Siobhan's Trust, is a, which is a Scottish charity, which does such excellent work. It, it feeds pizza um, by people dressed in kilts and loud music uh, blasting away. But it feeds pizza, uh, 4,000 people a day um, in the very difficult to reach uh, parts of Ukraine, the new, newly liberated villages. Um, and we went and helped them as part of their humanitarian effort. And whilst we were there, we also spent time with some of the um, infantry. So it was um, it was a very it was a life changing um, life changing visit actually I think for both of us we we, we you know I've never visited uh, a live war zone before I think well I know that Ian has but I haven't um, and the things that we saw made us more determined than ever to make sure that Ukraine is kept obviously um, in people's hearts over here and in politicians hearts and heads. Now, I believe, uh, Judith, you came rather close to a hand grenade. Do you mind telling us, talking us through this? <laughs> yeah, well, basically, when we, when we, we were in an armoured vehicle, um, and you, it's amazing, Alexis, how, how quickly you, you adapt to your circumstances. Um, but I had a broken finger at the time, and it was all strapped up. So uh, the men were all sat in this infantry vehicle and being able to be bashed around, and I had to hold on with, with one hand. And um, I was holding on and I had to put my hand behind the back of the seat and I just felt this kind of round metal object. <laughs> oh, no. um, and so I waited until we stopped and I stood up and um, to, to Ian's great delight, he kind of stood up and said, oh, yes, I know exactly what this is and got this hand grenade and um, passed it to the soldiers. Ian, I can hear you chuckling in the background of, of your colleague having <laughs> sat on a hand grenade. <laughs> It was very, very funny. I know it shouldn't have been because it's, it's a hand grenade. It's a live hand grenade. Mm. Uh, of course, yeah, I'd been in the army and I know that the pin was still in it. Uh, <laughs> when Judith fished this thing out with a horror on her face, I quickly grabbed it <laughs> off her and said, oh, yeah, that's all right. You've got the pin. It's still, <laughs> it's not going to send you through the roof. Handed it to the soldiers who looked at it and tossed it in a bucket. About half an hour later, Judith said, oh, it's still a bit funny here. And then got up, and there's a second hand grenade on the other side. She hadn't felt before. By this time, she's now fully au fait. She just picks it up and hands it to the soldiers again. Uh, so now she's a fully trained uh, soldier and knows exactly what to do with a hand grenade.